وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all praise indeed belongs to him. We ask him to send blessings and salutations upon the masterpiece Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions, all the messengers whom he has sent, and all their companions. And may Allah bless every single one of us and our offspring. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness and to give us every reason to smile. For indeed, the smile is a great act of worship. When we smile, it breaks a lot of ice. And many people who probably may have been slightly frightened of us, they become automatically close to us. They feel the closeness and the warmth. So this is why it is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to smile. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that understanding. We have been speaking about Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And we heard yesterday how he passed away and how he was buried. We also heard of how two of his sons had fought with one of them murdering the other and what happened as a result. What we need to know is there was another of his sons whom we made mention of very briefly yesterday. His name was Sheath alayhi salatu wasalam. In the English language, some say Seth. And I would like to think in the Urdu or the Gujarati languages, they say Seth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. However, this son of Adam was very close to him. He obeyed his instructions. He learned from his father. He actually used to remind his brethren, his brothers and the nephews and so on, and the grand nephews. Whilst Adam alayhi salatu was salam was alive as well, he continued to remind and to remind people of the beginning. Because there was nothing, nothing else to remind them about at that particular time. Besides to worship Allah alone and how shaitan had made a promise and so on. So this prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been made mention of in the Quran. However, we find made mention of him made in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that there were 104 chronicles that were revealed or parchments. And from them, 50 were revealed to Sheath alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, as time passed, it's very important that we picture what happened. There was one of the sons known as Qabil or Cain. He had aggressiveness in his behavior. He had greed, he had arrogance. He was a tough character, difficult to get along with. So what he did, he decided to depart, to leave the rest, and to go away on his own, somewhere very far away. So Adam alayhi salam, prior to his death, he used to live with Sheath alayhi salam and with all these other children of his in the mountainous regions, in the mountains. And now this young man decided, or Qabil decided to go to the valleys and to go to the flat land somewhere further away. Later on, Sheath alayhi salatu was salam, was given an instruction by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of his sharia was that it was prohibited to mix with the people who were gone on to the other side. This man, Qabil, took his own family with and he went away. They had their children, they had their own characteristics and it was prohibited to mix with them. That was the sharia revealed to Sheikh alayhi salatu was salam. And they followed it, they did not mix and they were saved to a great degree. After some time, a problem arose. If we recall, Shaytan, when he refused to prostrate to Adam, alayhi salatu was salam, he made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I promise you, I will show you, I'll lead them astray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go and try. Whoever follows you from amongst them, they are losers. They will be with you in hellfire. But my worshippers who worship me, who have turned to me, you will never be able to overpower them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to overpower the devil rather than him overpowering us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this verse is made mention of in Surah Al-Isra. وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِلِكَ وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدِهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Allah says, Go, O devil, O Satan, O Iblis, 
Go and try and befool them gradually as you wish. Go and use your sound. Now the word salt is used. Use your salt. What is the salt of shaitan? The sound of shaitan. The voice of shaitan. The mufassirin, almost all of them have made mention of music and musical instruments. And this is a verse in Surah Al-Isra. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go, try and control them. Use whatever you have at your disposal. Those who know me and those who worship me, they will never follow you. So he says, Allah says, go and try. You can use your sounds. You can use your cavalry. You can use your infantry. And go and be a partner in their wealth. Which means go and teach them whatever you want. What was that meant to be? Look at the books of Tafsir. They all make mention of illegal income, illicit, prohibited relationships. The income number one, when a person wants to derive income from that which is prohibited, and the next part of the verse says, go and be a part of their relationships as well. In their children, you can have a portion. And what the Mufassirin say is this means go and encourage them to do what you want in terms of illicit sexual behavior. And let's see what happens. Let's see who wins. Allahu Akbar. So Shaitan from that time, from that time, he bore this in mind. And he was given this authority as a test for all of us. Remember, why are we here? We are here because Adam alayhi salatu wasalam had promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I seek forgiveness for what I've done and I will not do it again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent man onto earth in order to test them. One word, test. So if anyone thinks we are here for another reason, they are wrong. We know we are here for a test. Everything we see is actually a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, this evening also we had verses that we had read where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya amanu Beautiful verses of the Quran. You see, in the condition of Ihram, it is prohibited to hunt. So Allah says, Oh, you who believe, we will test you by making something happen for you when you are in the condition of ihram those hunting animals will come very close to you as though they are saying hunt me hunt me but remember it's prohibited that we will do for you just to test you who is going to fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unseen to them but they know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all watchful so this means in our lives in fact, it reminds me of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in the Quran, the Jewish people. Very interestingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they had a Sabbath. The Sabbath, they declared that on this day you cannot work at all. So what happened? Allah tested them the same way. You know, the Quran says, <laughs> On that Saturday, the fishermen who were not allowed to work according to their own laws, they saw the fish as though the fish are saying, come fish, we know that it's a day when you're not allowed to fish. Amazing, amazing. So in order to come around that, they used to cast their nets Friday evening, pick them up on Sunday morning. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, you cannot do that. This is a test. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test all of us. Certain things are at hand. They are reachable. They are, if I can use the word, committable. A sin is committable. But whether we commit it or not depends on how much we fear Allah and what consciousness we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shaitan, he remembered this and he then came. He decided, let me go and tackle man. And I want to show man how to sin. Because man had to learn how to sin. Remember, if you haven't seen something, you probably wouldn't know how to do it. I was speaking to one of the youngsters from amongst us here, two days back. Very interesting. And he made mention of something regarding materialism. That you see, if you are driving the latest Mercedes, and next year, if Mercedes does not advertise the newer one they have, you will be 
so happy with yours because you haven't yet seen the new one. And two, three years later, you will still be happy with yours for as long as you believe it's the latest one. The same applies to your phone. When you have the iPhone, for example, they call it the iPhone 4. You'll be so happy with it, subhanallah, because you have not yet seen the 6 that has come out. Allahu Akbar. See, everyone's looking at me. When did that come out? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Don't worry, I don't know of it. But this is how man is. That when you don't know something, you're happy. This is why you have your wife, you'll be happy with her. The minute you do not lower your gaze and so on, you start getting upset with what you have based on something you don't even know. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The same applies to our condition as man. We're happy with what we have and we are so happy with it for as long as we don't know that there is something that might make us happier. Allahu Akbar. Why take the risk? Be happy, be content. So shaitan decided the same thing. And what he did is, he said, you see these people who are with Adam alayhi salam, and now that he's passed away, Sheith alayhi salam, he may recognize me because he knows shaitan. He decided that let me come in the form of a man. And I will go to, the, to those who are with sheath. And I will pretend as though I'm a defector from this side. Sorry. I will go to those who are with Qabil. Those who are with Cain. I will go to that side. And pretend like I've defected from sheath. Now there was a distinct, distinct sign. You could see very clearly. The men from Qabil's side were not very good looking. We heard about that. And the women were very good looking. And they had gone one side. When it comes to where Sheath alayhi salam and the rest of them were, the men were very good looking and the women were not that good looking. According to narrations, I'm not speaking obviously from my own pocket here. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it such that shaitan went to that side in the form of a handsome man. And when he went there, he asked for a job. Look, I need employment. I need to be employed here. So what happened? They looked at him, they decided, yes, good man, come, let's employ you. At least we've got one defector. Someone has defected, let's give him a job. So he got a job, and as a man, he worked amongst them, and he worked very hard. And then he slowly started. What did he start doing? It's important we listen to this. He slowly started making sounds, a sound that people had never heard before. Because... There were, there were no sounds that people had heard. That was the beginning of time. And now he took, he created a little drum and he beat it. And everybody would come, watch that sound. And they would come around him and watch. Then he got a bit of metal and he started hitting it. And then it created a sound and they came. And then he made a bugle and he started blowing into it. And it created a sound and they came and they were excited. Wow, these people are intelligent. They, are, they have advanced much more than us. And so they were so happy. And they got so engrossed in it that they slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, on the other hand, Sheikh alayhi salam kept on reminding his people. He kept on speaking with his people and he kept on telling his people what was right and what was wrong and so on. And on this hand, we find that shaitan is teaching them how to do evil, how to create evil. And after some time, they began to follow him. And when they began to follow him, it created this disaster for them. This is how they introduced the musical instruments into existence. This is how they introduced the musical instruments into existence. And through that, he would control them. They literally set aside a day, an evening, a Saturday evening. And amazingly, to this day, it lasts. To this day, it lasts. They set aside that evening where he would create these sounds. Everybody would come around and everybody would listen to him. And everybody would literally party. Party, they would party. Until there came a time when some of the youth from Sheath alayhi salatu wasalam were visited by shaitan. And what did he do to them? Something interesting. He went to them and he created a doubt in their minds. He made them ask a question. He made them question the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that we are not allowed to mix with these cousins of ours, with these relatives of ours? What is the law all about? What is the reasoning? What is so bad about them? Look at this question. Let's put it into our lives. Sometimes when we are taught not to have certain company, not to have certain friends, 
not to move in a certain direction. What is it that is so bad about these people that we should not be mixing with them? So when they started asking this question, it was answered for them that look, Qabil had engaged in a crime right at the beginning. He, he engaged in a sin at the very beginning. And this is what he did. He engaged in murder and his characteristics were different and so on. And for this reason, they were all on one side and we are ordered not to mix with them. These youth were dissatisfied with the answer. Nah, doesn't sound too good to us. We're not happy with it. When they were not happy with it, some of them decided, let's just have a peep at what's happening. Because we, we've heard that here things are going on. These people are progressing. Let's go and see. So they came down from the mountains and they went. And from a distance they were watching. And they had seen. And it pulled them. Imagine, they, they did not intend to engage in evil. But when they saw everybody is partying, and what did they see? They saw very good looking females. They saw very good looking females. And so they went closer. And when they went closer, they were seen. Subhanallah. They were seen. And they were good looking men. So the women began to engage in what is known as tabarruj. Tabarruj meaning to start displaying their beauty. And to start dressing up in order to attract. This was the first time shaitan taught them this. Now if you take a look at the tafsir of the Quran, you will find in Surah Al-Ahzab, there is a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the wives of the prophets, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as the believing women who take a lesson from that. Allah says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَىٰ Remain indoors as far as possible and do not adorn yourself in a wrong manner, in a wrong manner, meaning for those who are not meant to be seeing you in the way that the, those of the first ignorance engaged in. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who is a great mufassir, he says, this is referring to the Women of Qabil's side who used to beautify themselves in order to be made attracted to these males. And this is where the story comes up. al jahiliyyatul Ula mentioned in this tafsir, mentioned by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, his view is that this is what it was. And we are just using that today in order to put forward what happened. So when that happened, these young men, they came in and they enjoyed themselves. They had music, they had women, they had so much. They were partying, they were enjoying and they went away. See, it's typical what happens nowadays. You have the weekend, people go and after that they come back home at 3 in the morning. You know, we use the word babalas. I don't know what is used by the, by the people here. Which means they're half drunk, you know. They don't even know whether they are coming or going. Allahu Akbar. So as the men came back, they told the other youngsters, Hey, you don't know what you're missing out on. You see there, they've got different sounds. And these sounds are amazing. Now look, shaitan uses sound to control man. Wallahi, if you take a look at what a beat is. What is a beat? You start tapping your fingers. What happened? Who's controlling this finger of yours? Shaitan. What happens to your, your toe? It starts flicking. What happens to your head? It starts moving. What happens to your waist? Start shaking. Allahu Akbar. Who's controlling it? Let's be honest. It started at that time. It started at that time. And it is controlled. The one who can make you tap your finger on your steering wheel can easily make you murder. The one who can make you tap your finger on a steering wheel can easily lead you to adultery. He will create it in your heart and beautify it. He can do one thing and you continue. He will do another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So thereafter, these people came back with a bigger group. And they came back with a larger group. And the group was growing. And every time that party happened, there were people from this side who used to quietly go to that side and they used to engage in sin. The first sins, music was invented. And what else was invented? Created was adultery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. 
This is the history of it made mention by some of the historians and it is very very important very very interesting for us to note this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also told us in the Quran about al jahiliyyatul ula although there are no details the details we get from some of the mufassirin and some of the historians so this is how it started and this is why it's important for us today to understand that not everything that glitters is gold not everything that glitters is good for us. Not everything that appears to be so attractive is actually good for us. Because if we go in that direction, we could be falling straight into the trap of shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after making mention of this, He obviously tells us that those who have engaged in immorality, and those who have engaged in sin, those who have engaged in what will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they immediately remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they remember that they have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have that consciousness of Allah, and that remembrance makes them ask Allah's forgiveness. Allah says, not only do we forgive them, but if they remain steadfast thereafter, we will grant them Jannah. Listen to the verse. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ Allah says those who have engaged in immorality or they have oppressed against themselves, they have oppressed themselves in one way or another. When they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Him in repentance, because there is none who can forgive besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do not continue in their bad ways, but rather they turn their ways for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, for those, there is forgiveness from us. And we have prepared for them heaven, paradise, gardens wherein they will dwell forever and ever. And what a great place for those who would like to do good deeds. And this verse has hope. For every single human being, anyone, never ever feel that you have gone beyond the limit. Never feel that you are now beyond repair. There is always room to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives us a chance, He gives us another chance, He gives us 10 chances and many more chances. But we don't know the exact number of chances. Whilst these chances come through to us, grab hold of one of them. And turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I normally tell people the month of Ramadan is ideal. Ideal. What is harming us? What is so difficult for us to come to the masjid to stand for an hour? If, it, we, if we had it our way, we could probably stand out at the door for another hour if we had the right people to sit and chit chat. May Allah protect us. Sometimes as people are coming in, they are sinning. And as they go out, they are sinning. Whether it is with their phones or with their mouths, bad mouths, meaning bad words that come out of the mouth. Sometimes we walk out of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First thing we do, with all due respect to those who do do this, but what is wrong is wrong, even if the whole world engages in it. First thing we do, we still not even out of the door. The cigarettes are out and the light is out. Next thing we're flicking it and it's at our mouth. But where were we just now? Moments before that we were speaking, communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can't we at least for the month of Ramadan show some respect? And move a little bit further away from the masjid. Not to say we are encouraging it, but at least if we show that amount of respect, there is a chance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed create a day when we'll give it up. You know, when a doctor tells you, Allahu Akbar, now I've given this example before. When a man's heart suddenly fails and he gets a pain and he drops, then they pick him up and take him to the hospital. And the doctor says, you know what? You've got to give up smoking. Wallahi, nine times out of ten, if not ten, he gives it up. Why? One doctor told him that. One doctor. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many of us are ready today to say this habit is out? There we are. How many? Allahu Akbar. 
Are we waiting for a little heart attack before we can give up a bad habit? Are we waiting for an angina attack before we can throw something out of the, the window? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, don't wait for that. I give you good health. But whilst you're in good health, leave that. Allahu Akbar. This is why we say, some people turn away from Allah. They don't want to worship Allah, neither in Ramadan nor outside the month of Ramadan. So what Allah does for them, He gives them a favor. What is that favor? He makes them sick and ill to the degree that the doctors cannot help them. So what do they have to do? They are forced, forced literally to say, Ya Allah, for the first time in their lives, raising their hands and coming salah early, mashallah. That is cheap. Wallahi, cheap meaning we, we are still fortunate that we haven't died before we raised our hands to Allah. But the question I have, should we wait for something to happen to us before we're going to raise our hands? This is why Allah says, be thankful, be grateful, recognize the devil and know about him before he even comes in your direction so that you will know how he tries and distract you. Ask those who've committed adultery all their lives, what have they achieved by it? Ask those who have sinned all their lives gambling, what have they achieved by it? Ask those who have sinned all their lives by stealing, cheating, conning, deceiving, by engaging in all sorts of other sins, whether it is drugs and alcohol, what did they achieve by it? They achieved what? Momentary joy? Is that what they got? And now, if Allah has mercy on you, He will grant you a chance to say, Ya Allah, forgive me, never again will I do this. But if not, may Allah protect us all. We fall into the clutches of the devil. What happens? On our deathbeds, when it's too late, we will then be thinking that, Ya Allah, I should have given up this habit and that habit. You know what the Quran says? Those type of people whom they only want to think about it on their deathbeds, Allah says, that's too late. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ رَبِّ رُجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتُ كَلَّا Allah says when death comes to such a person, he will say, Oh Allah, send me back. I want to do good. Now I know. I'd like to do all the good. Now we know. Allah says, No, you will not do good. It's just a statement coming out of your mouth. You were given the chances. You were given the reminders. The messengers came one after the other. Do you know the mercy of Allah is such that He did not only let us know the history of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but for us, there is a reason why He has told us the stories of so many prophets in the Quran and in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take a look at the people of Shu'aib, for example. They used to have wrong business dealings in this ummah there are people who do that take a look at the people of Lut alayhi salam they used to have homosexuality in them in this ummah there are people who do do that so at that time the nations used to engage in one or two major items but with us there are pockets of people who have engaged in almost all those things that are made mention of in the past and this is one of the reasons why all those stories have come and they have come to us. Remember, and this is an example again that some of the scholars have given. They say, if fuel with a match created a huge inferno a thousand years ago, what makes you think that fuel with a match today is not going to create the same inferno? That is foolishness. Since we know people have been giving you warnings, there's a warning, petrol, warning, inflammable, warning, no lighters, no matches here. And if you look at it and you say, no, this was a thousand years ago. Let me try it again and see what happens. That's what we're doing. We hear what happened to the people of Lut, we still want to engage. We hear what happened to the people of Shu'aib, we still want to engage. We hear what happened to the people of Hud, we still want to engage. Why? Because we do not want to take heed of that sign that we see. Highly inflammable. Make sure you don't have this here. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. The reason why I have paused, if you notice, to give a few examples is because these type of examples have an effect and an impact on mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ ضَرَبْنَا لِلنَّاسِ فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ 
kulli mathal. In this Quran, we have given man so many different types of examples so that they think. But Allah says, فَأَبَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ إِلَّا كُفُورًا So many people have just refused. They have rejected. They don't want to believe. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have a beautiful month of Ramadan. As we say, an effort is required to come closer to Allah. Wallahi, wallahi. If we come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will see miracles in our life. We dedicate our days for salah without missing one salah. Come what may, see what happens in a month, two months. Start seeing your doors opening. Miracles will happen. Wallahi, those around us have already seen them and I'm sure we are tasting them. Allah grants you contentment of the heart. But when there is a person who wants to follow the sins of the time, Wallahi, they will continue becoming more and more sophisticated. We will waste our days and our times behind this technology if we are using it wrongly. And we will waste our time behind sin and drugs. Wallahi, if we would like to leave it, we can leave it now by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this reminder in the month of Ramadan, when our hearts are meant to be softened, is not enough for us, then what are we waiting for? What is there that is going to come to us? In the past, I have made mention of a point. And the point is, how many reminders would I like before I will turn? Write it down. I need another 200 reminders, then I will turn. And then start jotting down how many reminders you've had. There will come a day when you'll strike the 200th one. Then will you turn? Allahu Akbar. If you're going to turn at 200, you'd rather turn now, so that you can gain all that time. Because who knows, we might die at 150. And then what will happen? We can't go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, No, in my mind I made a promise that I'm going to wait for another 50 and you didn't give me the life to see the other 50. Too late. Allah says, we gave you enough. Enough times. Enough warnings. Like Allah says in the Quran, some people, no matter who tells them, no matter who reminds them, they don't want to be reminded, they don't want to take heed. So Allah says, you can bring whoever you want to talk to them, they won't listen. So much so that Allah says, even if the angels were to be brought in front of them to talk to them live, they wouldn't turn. And over and above that, Allah says, are they waiting for Allah to come down now to talk to them to say, hey, you better turn. Allahu Akbar. These are the verses of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. Inshallah, tomorrow we will meet again going into the next prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until then, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma, bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.